Good afternoon everybody. Um, sorry that this video was a little bit later coming up on Friday this week. Um, just one or two other things that we had to get done. So um, we're thinking about uh, this Sunday coming uh, and we're continuing to look into the story of Jeremiah and we're getting into one of the stories about Jeremiah uh, that if you know Jeremiah at all you know this about him. Uh, that he was thrown in a well or in a cistern as the Bible calls it. Uh, he was punished for speaking the truth to Judah uh, and uh, the officials of the royal palace who, who didn't like what Jeremiah was saying uh, arranged for him to be thrown into this well uh, in the middle of the besieged city of Jerusalem uh, and basically left there to starve. Uh, this was Jeremiah's experience uh, and this was the kind of uh, the lowest point of his life I suppose both physically and, um, and metaphorically he was at the low point and it seemed as though this was it this would be the end uh, this is where he would uh, come to die uh, but of course if you know the story you know that, that rescue comes for Jeremiah that he's lifted from that pit uh, and it's reflective very much of the experience that's recorded by the psalmist. Uh, Psalm 40 uh, says this, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. Jeremiah has that experience. He's in the pit. He's in the lowest point. Uh, and it is God who, through his friends, lifts him out and allows him to experience life again. But when Jeremiah is in there, he's in there for a reason. He's in there because he, is, he has a reputation as the, the bad news prophet. Uh, the other prophets around Jerusalem were the good news prophets, or seemed to be the good news prophets. They were saying, you know, everything will be all right. We'll be okay if you just put your trust in Egypt they will rescue us from the Babylonians. Or if you just put your trust in these gods, they will look after us and, and everything will be all right. Everything will be fine. Uh, don't worry about it. I know things look bleak at the minute, but don't worry. Jeremiah gave the opposite message. Jeremiah was going around the city of Jerusalem saying, the Babylonians are going to level this place. They are going to destroy it. It is going to be a wasteland. And you would be better getting out now uh, and surrendering yourselves to the Babylonian army than waiting for them to come and tear everything down around you and take your life too. And that was the message that he was giving and it was a bad news message. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and for that reason, he got thrown into the, the cistern, into the well and left there to die. Of course, the problem is that, that we know that the reality of our lives is that there are times when we've got to accept and know the bad news before we can respond to the good. Before the good news is any good to us, we've got to know what situation we're in. We've got to know that we're lost before we can be found. The bad news is you're lost. The good news is you can be found. We've got to know that we're sick before we can be made well again. If you just go along pretending that you're not sick or ignoring the symptoms, you'll never be made well again. And in the Bible's terms, in the New Testament terms, in Ephesians, we've got to know that in our natural state as sinners before God, we are dead. We've got to know that we're dead in transgression and sin before we can allow his spirit to make us alive again in Christ. Judah's problem and the, the problem of successive kings of Judah was that they never ever wanted to hear the bad news. They only ever wanted to hear the good news. Zedekiah, who is king at the time that Jeremiah is thrown in the well, is a prime example. He asks Jeremiah to come and give him a word from the Lord, hoping that that word from the Lord will be, Zedekiah, don't worry, it's all going to be fine. Jeremiah comes and gives him a word from the Lord, but the word from the Lord is, Zedekiah, you've got to surrender to the Babylonians now if you want to save your skin. But he didn't listen. Judah never listened to the bad news, even though in the bad news 
were the seeds of the good news that they needed. That God was going to preserve them, that God was going to be faithful to them, that even as they surrendered to the Babylonians, even as exile took place, even as all those bad things happened, God was going to be there for them. They never ever accepted the bad news, so they were in no position to accept the good. The bad news about us, of course, is that we're sinners is that we're self-centered naturally, is that we're turned in on ourselves and turned away from God. And we've got to understand that about ourselves. It's the very first step in receiving and um, uh, applying the gospel of Jesus to our lives, that we know that that's who we are. So that in Christ, by trusting in him, by accepting what he's done for us, uh, through his death and resurrection, we can be made into who he wants us to be, children of God, loved by him. The bad news is uncomfortable to hear, and we'll discover that on Sunday. But it's necessary for us to hear if we're going to really live the full, abundant life that he has for us. Look forward to seeing you uh, if you're coming to church uh, this Sunday. Uh, in the building again just rem remind you to uh, adhere to all of the the guidelines that we've we've laid out before um, bring your mask bring your your little attendance token if you can if you if you don't have one there are some there that'll be filled in for you uh, and come and and enjoy the experience of, of being together if you're not feeling like that at the moment uh, Please do enjoy the, the live stream and the live stream should be a little bit clearer this week as well in terms of the picture because we've made some improvements. Uh, and of course, uh, that reminder as well, if you're suffering from any of the symptoms uh, of COVID-19 at the moment, please don't come out to church, but please do follow the guidelines that are given uh, and get a test uh, and um, uh, make sure that you're, you're keeping well. Um, we trust that we will uh, be able to worship God together, whether we're physically in the building or uh, in homes this weekend, and trust that you'll know God speaking to you and his presence with you uh, as you worship on Sunday. God bless.